right, today we've got two topics to discuss. One is, um, you all have, some of you have been asking like what publishing companies I use, where do I find my plays? And then another question has been like, how do I choose the right play for my program for that particular year or season? So that's what we are going to watch first. I'm coming to you live from my bedroom floor because my baby's taking a nap. Also, hopefully you can get through this video with being able to hear me and understand me. I've been quite sick. So I uh, just got my voice back today, but really felt enthusiastic about filming this video. So here we are. Hopefully this helps you. If you want to skip ahead to the part where we just talk about like what I do to choose which particular play we're going to do, I'll put the timestamp here. But first we're going to talk about the different publishing companies that I use, where I find plays and musicals, where do I find scripts, all of that resource access information. So let's talk about musicals first. So for musicals, I mostly use MTI shows. That stands for Musical Theater International. This uh, company is where you're gonna find like a lot of the Disney shows, a lot of the big Broadway name shows, okay? Uh, for example, last year I did Guys and Dolls. I got that from MTI. Um, you know, any Disney show, any big Broadway show, it's pretty much gonna be on there if the rights are released. And you could also look and see like what is coming up soon. Um, Beetlejuice is on my radar. So hopefully I can do that one day. That would be so much fun. The next uh, musical theater company that I've used before for publishing and getting rights is Concord Theatricals. I've only used, I've only used them once because um, they're the only one I could find that had restricted rights available for Phantom of the Opera. And this was back in 2019. Now I know Phantom's going off Broadway soon um and then anyone would be able to do the show but we were privileged enough to get restricted rights to do that in 2019 and it was the highlight of my career by far loved it now <clears throat> where do i find my plays uh it just depends year to year um i have like four different ones that i look at and the first one is hewer publishing and uh the reason i like hewer publishing is because you can sign up um for free to join their um, list and they will send you one free digital play to read a month. And that's actually how I found my show that I did in the fall, Wizards and Wands. And it's like a Harry Potter spoof. It's hilarious. It's definitely my sense of humor, just strange, weird, over the top ridiculousness. Um, and yeah, they sent that to me for free. Uh, I downloaded it and then I read it like a year later I just download every time they send me something, I download and I save it. And then I'll read it when it's time to start preparing for the new season. And I found that one and, and just fell in love with it. So I love Hero Publishing because they give me free stuff. And then, you know, you can figure out if it's for you or not. The next one is Play Scripts. Play Scripts is great. You could sort by, um, you know, age level, cast size, genre, if you're doing a competition show, you know, things like that going to have a lot of the popular titles on there okay um so if you're looking for something that's going to be well known look at play scripts also for dramatist that's another one um you know same thing they've got all kinds of categories you can look through and figure out what's right for you um with some of these play scripts and dramatist i think sometimes they'll let you download a sample to read so you don't have to buy it um but oftentimes they'll both have a perusal fee that's really cheap. I've you know seen it as cheap as $2 before, so not too bad. And then finally, a little hidden gem. This is called Off The Wall Plays. And I did a show from Off The Wall Plays publishing company a couple years ago for competition. If you like, <clears throat> I don't know if this is the correct term, pushing the envelope, if you like things that are more abstract. If you like things that are unique and not well known in the mainstream theater world, if you like things that have certain themes to them that it's hard to find works about um, in regards to, you know, such as LBGTQ+, for example, look at Off the Wall Plays. This is my little hidden nugget, and you're welcome for me giving it to you because there are some really cool works on there. <clears throat> There's some on there too that just aren't great. 
So you just gotta pick and choose, but sometimes you'll find those golden little nuggets. And I did find one of those once and I loved it. Um, they're great for small cast sizes and for community theaters, um, for, high, for children's theater, maybe not, well, yeah, I think they do have a children's theater uh, section, but there you go, check it out. If you are a playwright and you want to publish your own play and you can't get in with the big wigs of dramatists and play scripts, try off the wall plays and get your, get your foot in the door there um, and see what happens. Off the wall plays also lets you download digital copies uh, to read and they'll give you like so many pages for free and then if you want to read more I think you do have to pay but yeah it's a pretty cool site. Now if you have a theater department that is like a lot of people's or if it's if it's brand new and you're just building it up you're gonna have a lot of females in it potentially okay um, a lot of feminine energy all right and you know sometimes it can be hard to choose plays that um, are great for large female ensembles. So I do have a playwright I would suggest that you look at, and she's from Play Scripts. Her name is Peg Herrig, and she is a retired English teacher, and uh, she used to do theater, uh, high school theater. Um, I think she might be a professor now, but anyways, she knows that a lot of theater programs are, you know, heavily female-based, so. She wrote two plays. She writes books and stuff too, but she wrote two plays that people can use for their programs if they have a lot of ladies. And I have done one of her shows before. I did Rumpelstiltskin. It was hilarious. I feel like she and I have the same sense of humor. Just this ridiculous humor. Just very over the top. Um, it just really gets my creative juices flowing. This type of humor. You know, that's just, that's me, but you do you. But check her out. All of these publishing companies that I'm mentioning, I will list in a Google Doc in my description bar down below. So you can check them out at your convenience. All right, let's get to part two of the video. Part two of the video is um, how do I choose plays that are right for my production? Part two of the video is how do I choose what production is right for my theater department at that moment in time. First thing, you gotta look at your demographics. I look at my demographics, who are my people I'm gonna be working with, right? Now you won't really know much of your incoming freshmen, um, but you can base it on your sophomores, your current freshmen through, C, through juniors. So look at that and be like, okay, these are the kids that always show up. Um, here are their strengths, here are their weaknesses, and what can I, what, what magic can I make happen with them? Um, now, if you're starting out and you're brand new to the school, or if you're brand new to developing a program, this is going to be a bit more difficult. And it's going to take some learning curve to get to know the background of your students and what they are and are not capable of. So I would start off with a smaller show in that aspect and just try to play it safe at first for that first year. Read, this is obvious, but read a ton of plays and then read more, and then read more. And when you come across something that makes you smile or gasp or have a physical or audible reaction, save that one to the side as a contender or choose it. Because if you're having that sort of reaction just from reading it, think about the creativity that and the inspiration that you're gonna feel when you're directing it. If you're not really getting much from reading it on the page, move on. Don't sit there and finish the play. Just move on because if it's not hooking you right then and there, you're wasting your time. So I always end up starting to read and then not finish a bunch of them. And maybe the rest of you out there would want to, that's fine, you do what works for you. But if it doesn't hook me within the first 10 pages, I'm done. I don't have time, I'm moving on to the next. Um, unfortunately, sometimes they do hook me and I'm like, this is not right for my show. This is not right for, or I'm sorry, this is not right for my department. You know, I don't have, um, enough of this, you know, these types of characters in my department. I don't have, uh, I don't have the technical means to do this. <clears throat> but 
Which leads me to my next point. If you find something you like or love, ask yourself, do I have the, um, am I going to have the technical support that I need to produce this show? Am I going, if I'm working on my own, which a lot of us theater teachers are, we're all by ourselves. Am I going to be able to do this on my own? Am I going to, this is a large set, you know, um, for example, Little Mermaid. Gosh, I couldn't do that by myself. I would need a lot of help. Um, so just think about that. Like, are you going to be able to manage this in a technical sense by yourself? Or if the answer is no, do you have the means and resources to hire help? So don't forget about that. Got to ground yourself a little bit. Don't get too up in the clouds. Got to be real. But be real. When it comes to choosing a musical, I work with, I collaborate with the other musical uh, colleagues in the building. And we look at, okay, let's look at the vocal range of this show. Do we have the students that can handle the vocal demands of this show? Let's look at the instrument parts. Do we have the musicians in the building? Because we use a student pit. Do we have the musicians in the building? So we're at a weird angle here, but my memory was gone. It's, it's no more on my phone. Too many pictures of the baby. So I'm on my husband's phone and I'm gonna try to airdrop this clip over to him. But anyway, I think what I was saying was you need to look at the level of dance that is involved in the show. Can your students handle it? And um, then just look at your overall school calendar. And um, sorry, I feel ridiculous inside of this tree right now look at your overall school calendar and make sure that you have the time to produce the show, to like build it from the ground up, rehearse it, audition it, cast it, perform it. And um, something I do is I plan my season for the next year in May. So like this May, I will have planned already the dates, the audition dates, rehearsal dates, show dates for my fall show, and spring musical. So that is it. Sorry for the wild ride and field trip we took to the Amazon. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video.